Hey everyone, this is Neil Barnhill with the Barnhill Golf Institute, helping you find your winning way. Today is our fourth edition of our Golf Weekly News Show called The Drive. A lot of great information to go over here today. Starting out with the BMW Championship, then we got the Ryder Cup final pick that came in last night, and also we got a Rants and Raves edition that's going to be a whole lot of fun today, and then we got an equipment review. All right, let's dive right in there and talk about the BMW Championship, which ended yesterday. It was a rain delay. They had a lot of rain on that course this past week. Wherever it flew, it stuck. The guys were taking it low. It was a lot of fun to watch if you're a golf fan. And congratulations to Keegan Bradley, who won for the first time in six years. He is a great ball striker, great driver of the golf ball. Just been struggling with the putter a little bit. He's ranked 186 on the tour in straight strokes gained in putting. And this, this week he was number one, no surprise. When you putt good, when these guys putt good, they, they usually win. So congratulations to him. He moves up to six on the standings. All right, let's go over the FedEx standings as we go into the last week at East Lake for the Tour Championship, and there's now only 30 players. All right, we got Bryson DeChambeau at one still. Justin Rose, who came in second, he, they, he lost in a playoff. He's been playing outstanding. Tony Finau had another great week. He, he was tied for eighth this past week. Dustin Johnson tied for 24th. He's number four. Justin Thomas, number five. He tied for 12th last week at BMW. Keegan Bradley, number six. He was at number 29. Big move, huge move. Number seven, Brooks Kepka. He tied for 19th. Bubba Watson had a solid performance. He's number eight. He was tied for 16th. Billy Horschel playing great. Tied for third this week. He's at number nine. And Cameron Smith off this week, but don't count him out. Tied for 65. All right. The guys in the top five, if they win at Eastlake in the Tour Championship, they are guaranteed to win the FedEx Cup title. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. Hopefully the weather's a little bit drier out there this week. But this that was fun tournament, this BMW Championship last week. I don't know if you caught any of it, but yeah, the players were having fun. And I have to do this. I can't help myself. Is They did the Philly Eagle out there. They were making so many Eagles out there. And if you didn't see it, I'm going to show you how it goes. You can you can write a comment to me and give me, give me a remark on it. Guys were making Eagle putts and then doing that dance. So there you go. There you have it. All right. Moving right along here. I know you don't want to watch me do that again, so I'm going to stick to the golf. The Ryder Cup, the final Ryder Cup spot was picked last night by Jim Furyk. And no surprise, it's Tony Finau. He has played great. He had another solid performance last week, as we said. He tied for eighth. He's just had a great year, and I think he'll fit right in. He's a great team player. He played team sports growing up, so I it's gonna you can fit him anywhere in the format of the Ryder Cup and he's gonna do outstanding in my opinion both teams the European team and the American team have all 12 players now and we'll talk a lot more about that next week in our fifth episode but man it's gonna be exciting to watch this tour championship this this weekend out at out at East Lake in Atlanta Georgia it's gonna be fun to watch this it's just nothing getting better than that if you're a golf fan. So looking forward to that. And all right, we're going to move right along to our rants and raves. All right, I'm going to start off with the positive this week instead of the negative. I'm going to rave about golf now. I've been fortunate enough to use that in the last three or four months that I started playing again. I got a buddy who uses it. And I mean, it's just so convenient. You can book the same day. You get, it's just simple, great prices. You can book a tee time at any time. You can compare prices when you look it up to see what your rate is compared to other golf courses. And then also too, what I really like is you can see the reviews from people that played there maybe the day before. It was the course airified? Um, what's the condition like? They, you get honest feedback on that review section. You get so many courses with great rates. It's just, it's very convenient. You book it online and I highly recommend it. Almost all the golf courses are on it. So take advantage of that. It's easy to register and do that online. Okay, so my rant today, okay, is going to be, I have done it, and I'm sure you out there have done it, called a golf course, made a tee time, paid normal fees, and you get out there, 
and the course is airified. Just done. Maybe the day before, bumpy, sandy, and they did not tell you that. That just, to me, I, I can't stand that. I mean, I drove out there to the course. I'm gonna spend my next four or five hours playing where I can't tell if the, how I'm rolling the golf ball. I would have dang, dang sure gone somewhere else. I, I know that. So just do us a favor as golfers. Tell us that you're airified. I mean, it's not a good feedback for the golf course when we leave there. We're not happy. It's not good customer service. So please, golf courses, let us know when you have verified. I know some of you do, but there's still courses when I call, they don't let you know. And that's just, we're not happy. As golfers, we do not like to go to a course. We're expecting it to be in good shape, and then all of a sudden it's verified. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? Let us know. All right, we'll come, in, we'll come a week later. It, uh, it won't bother us. We just need to know. All right, so there's my rant on that. I'm sure we've all had that happen before, and we appreciate it from the courses that do tell us that, and that goes a long way in our, their customer service, in our opinion. All right, let's talk about an equipment review, the Nikon Cool Shot 20 Laser Range Finder. I personally have this device. It's got a, it's, the cost is a little bit less expensive than some of the other ones out there and it works incredible. You can get it right around $195 on, on Amazon. It comes with a case and the two batteries. And it's one of the lightest and most compact golf range finders you'll find. Uh, it's got, I'm gonna read some stuff that it has and I agree with what the review is on it. It's got first target priority technology which allows for the closest object in a group of objects to be measured every time. I agree with that. It does. It does a great job for doing, hitting that object and giving you the yardage. It's a single press of the power button, provides eight second continuous measurement scanning to allow for quick measurements to multiple targets. It, it does. It, it does do that and I tell you what, for the price point on this camera, I am very happy with it. It does everything I need it to do. And like I said, it's a little bit less expensive than some. It doesn't have the slope on it, but that's okay. I'm old school. I can kind of figure that out, you know, if it's uphill or downhill. So I, I have nothing but rave reviews to tell you. Positive from what I've been using this for the last three or four months. I highly recommend it. It's a great, great range finder. It does the job. It does what it's supposed to do. Okay, if you like my Philly Eagle dance today, please see me at barnhillgolf.com. Like me on Facebook at Barnhill Golf Institute. Also Pinterest, we have a great blogs and vlogs on there, Barnhill Golf Institute. Instagram, Twitter, please shout out to me and let me know what you like, what you don't like, and uh, any question, anything you'd like me to cover, and I'll be glad to talk about. See you next time. Have a good day.